So I've been rewatching One Piece. And I thought maybe it would, would be prudent if I made a bit of a review of One Piece. So I would go through all the arcs, all of them, and you know, wrap up my thoughts around it. I've watched One Piece, if you count this time, five times. <laughs> um, so I watched it four times, and then this will be my fifth time. <laughs> so let's begin. Now, where it begins depends on where you start, because if you're reading the manga, it begins with Luffy stabbing himself in the eye and giving him that scar, and then it begins with, like, the Shanks backstory. If you're watching the anime, though, it starts after that, where Luffy... Well, what's funny is in the anime... Yeah, in the anime, you don't get to actually see the part where Luffy pistols the um the sea king you don't you don't see that until the sabo flashback it's in the opening but it's you don't see it because the way the flashbacks work so you know yeah in the manga you see that but you don't see that in in the anime until the sabo work and of course the first time i watched it i watched the anime i didn't read the manga so Meh. But, so I'll just give you like what the anime does, because I think it's up to interpretation. I think the way the anime does it is actually kind of better, because you get that first introduction, Luffy in a barrel. You don't even see Luffy till like 10 minutes in. Then he pops out, and it plays the music, his theme, I believe. And you know, he's like, ah, you know, he's all, ah, you know, like it's, and that's very good, of course. Uh, I love that moment. I love Luffy's introduction. I think it's an epic, it's a great introduction. Um, you see Nami before that sneaking around and all that. Uh, it sets up that tone very nicely. Of course, like Luffy beats Alvida. You get to see his powers for the first time. And, and it's a great introduction along with the opening. The opening and that first episode establish the tone and the character of One Piece very well. Um, I felt right into it. The moment when I first watched it, I felt right into it. I'm just like, okay, I'm in this series, I got it. Um, and you can watch dub or sub, by the way. If you're watching the Funimation dub, it's fun. It's honestly very good. To, to a certain extent, I think it's better than the Japanese, actually. So, if you're watching Funimation or you're watching sub, both are good. I really have nothing bad to say about either. Um... Four kids, watch it as a meme later on in your life. Do not have that be your first impression of One Piece, please. <laughs> but you get that great that great introduction. I mean, that's one of the... I mean, One Piece has many themes. But one thing One Piece seems to do is it likes to have conflicting characters understand each other on the same terms, right? And Luffy and Kobe are a perfect example of that. Kobe wants to be a marine, so his goal conflicts with Luffy, who is a pirate. But Luffy and Kobe can be friends and respect each other, and Kobe respects Luffy just because of his dedication to what he does, right? And that's something that One Piece does. That's very interesting that it does that, but if you look for it, that kind of thing is everywhere in One Piece. The two conflicting sides can meet on mutual grounds. You see that all the time. And of course, with the whole pirate setup, it tries to, to stroke this, this, this tune of irony. Where pirates, you would think, are the villains, but our main characters are pirates, and they are shown to be you know, moral. We can, we can be on their side, we can understand their, their, their qualms, and we are on their side, even though they are pirates. And we see this moral greatness, because... There are pirates who are bad and who are villains. Bad in a very stereotypical way, I mean. But the, the the most prudent, consistent villains are the Marines, who are presented to be good. Right? They are the law enforcement in the One Piece world. Um, that's a very interesting thing about it, is how One Piece does that. 
And that is another theme you will see throughout the entirety of One Piece. That is always there. Um, and One Piece has that. One Piece, you have world building. Excellent world building. And, you know, from there on starts on that little Alveda's ship. Well, it starts on this kind of like pleasure cruise, and then Alveda shows up. Um, but then once it's done, Luffy goes on this boat with Kobe down to recruit Zoro. And that's another thing we begin with this first episode that is introduced, is world building. The One Piece world is just brilliantly complex. Brilliantly complex. Huge span. But it's great. It has one of the largest worlds in any manga I've ever seen. But that world building. And the fact that it is relatively interconnected. As in, you know where things are because of the world map. And things from previous still have effects. Not all the time, but they do. And I love that. So so Luffy meets Zoro. Zoro, again, appealing to the theme of kind of conflictive forces getting on the same side. Zoro is a pirate hunter. Granted, he doesn't identify by that. He is identified by that, but he is not that's not part of his identity. He just does it for a living. And it's interesting how Zoro comes to Luffy's side. I mean, Luffy basically bribes Zoro to join his side. You know, he says, join my side or I'll leave you here and you'll die. <laughs> that's basically how it goes. And that's funny, of course, because it shows the goofiness of Luffy's character. Um, Zoro, I believe, said something about that where he said, oh, are you a madman? <laughs> you know, it's funny. But he's just like, hey, okay, get my sword. And, you know, I'll go with you. So Luffy goes and gets Zoro's katana, comes back, epic scene, because he's with uh, Hal Meppo, right? And you get that funny scene where he has Hal Meppo guide him and he uses Hal Meppo as a shield. Very funny. Then he gets the sword, takes three of them, jumps out, you know, takes the bullets, right? And that's the first time Zoro sees that Luffy is a rubber man. Uh, of course, his powers were introduced earlier. Um... Then he goes, bing, and, you know, shoots all of them out. And that's a great, I love that. I love that, because that's the first scene, I believe, where you see Luffy's resistance to bullets. I believe that is. Um, and that's great. And then he hands Zoro the swords, and then he, he immediately is out. And he blocks the Marines, with he, like, he has his sword just behind him in that kind of pose. And they're, they're having, like, a conversation while he's doing that. Um... And I love that he's just like uh, the Japanese. He even says like, uh, "Like, what is your order, Captain?" or something like that. Like he says, "Captain" in English, epic. But um, Zoro then beats like all those Marines himself, um, and then uh, what do we do? Does Luffy defeat? Ah, <laughs> uh, the. I don't remember if Luffy defeats Morgan or if Zoro does. I think Zoro does, actually. Yeah. So then he is defeated. That's a nice scene because, like, for example, Morgan is like a villain, and he's viewed as a villain by his, his troops as well. When he's defeated, they celebrate. They don't like him. Um, so again, establishing that theme of <laughs> kind of ironic conflict or ironic heroes and villains basically this moral grayness uh, is, is persistent throughout one piece and early on it's established very well here by this you you, you understand these themes so 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 then and i love this part right so then luffy and zoro you know go into this bar here and i didn't, I didn't even talk about that one girl who went to help zoro you know, because Zoro, the entire reason he got thrown in, or I guess not thrown in prison, but he was, you know, laying on the post there, starving himself, is because he made a bet. Uh, you know, he made a bet to Hal Meppo, and he says, you know, I'll survive for a month without food in exchange to leave these people alone. So that shows a virtue to Zoro, because of Zoro's, because of course Zoro is presented as evil, basically. But when we meet him, not really like that. 
is basically like a nice guy kind of trait. Well, he's not a nice guy, he's a Chad, obviously. But you know what I mean, right? He's doing a very, uh, I don't know if be the word, you know, respectable, humble kind of thing. He could have just slashed off Hell Melville, but he didn't. He took that bet for that reason. And he took the non-violent option. He's a strong man. He's a patient man. So, there you have it. But, um, I like how that theme works with the girl. And, of course, they're back at that bar or cafe. Probably a bar. It's one piece. Um, and then the Marines come in to investigate Kobe. Because Kobe has been associated with these pirates. And they are, allow Luffy and Zara to basically get off the hook because they help him now get rid of Morgan. But now they're questioning Kobe's allegiance. So then Luffy basically like fake bullies Kobe to make it appear as though they're basically disconnected. You know? And that allows Kobe to get into the Marines. Um, and I love how that was handled. Because when I was first seeing it, I was quite confused, right? I was like, what's going on here? But, you know, he's doing it for Kobe's sake. And Kobe notes that. And that humbles Kobe to Luffy even more in the end. Uh, very nice scene. Very nice scene uh, there. And then they, you know, get on the boat and they leave. And I like that element, especially in early One Piece. They're journeying on the boat. One Piece feels like an adventure. It's not just it has an adventure theme. It is an adventure. Like, Hymerox Hunter has an adventure theme, but it kind of lacks actual adventure qualities in many ways. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not talking about Hunter x Hunter right now, but One Piece feels like a legitimate adventure. You go from point A to point B, the scenario is changing, the location is changing, there's progression in this world, the world is defined, and you go on. It's not, like some of the reasons I like the original Dragon Ball. Similar theme. An actual adventure. Goku goes on adventures for the Dragon Balls, so he's looking around, and you see various things throughout the world, and I love that kind of thing. Right? I, it's more than just having an adventure theme. You have to have an actual adventure with regularly changing locations and things like that. One Piece does that. And it gives this very nice sense of progression to One Piece. And especially when Oda references back these things, it's very rewarding because it gives the world a great sense of continuity. It does. But, um, so Luffy and Zoro go off on their little dinghy boat, you know. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, they're basically just in, like, a little row boat. I think they have, like, one barrel there. You know, it's pretty cheap. Yeah, like, they have a little little bit of a sale. But, you know, it's, 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 it's nice because it's humble, right? It's nice because it's humble because Luffy started out with basically the same boat. They're just going out here, right? They're just going out here. <laughs> and, you know, you don't get that grandness to it. You get the humble quality to it. And I like that a lot. So... In the anime at this point is when you get Luffy's backstory. In the manga, you already had it, but you get Luffy's backstory at this point. And I kind of think it's better the way the anime does, honestly. You can do it either way, but, you know, you get... Just because I think Luffy's first introduction, being popping out of that barrel, that's the first time you see him, I think that's actually a very nice way of doing it, but... It can be done either way. But, you know, you have the Shanks backstory. And this... <sighs> you know, so you have Luffy as a kid, and he's with these pirates. And you don't see Garp at this point. There really isn't that broader context at this point. You don't know who Ace is. You don't know who Garp is. Definitely don't know who Sabo is. So, you know, all you see is Luffy as a kid, seven years old, with Shanks. And they establish Shanks' character and kind of establish Luffy's character from that as well. I mean, more on that later. But Luffy, you know, he's, he's made fun of by the pirates, right? Because he's a kid. And, of course, Luffy says at this point, oh, well, I'm good at swimming and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm good at swimming. Which, again, grants irony to the fact that he loses his swimming by eating the devil fruit, which he does. He eats the devil fruit and he can't swim anymore. Um, and I love the way he freaks out by that. I love the way he freaks out by that. Of course, we don't know why Shanks had the devil fruit or why it's just hanging out there. There are a million theories as to why. Um, I just thought he found it and he just had it there 
and whatever. Maybe they were thinking of who they wanted to eat it. And Shanks wasn't worried that much. And granted, he tried to, like, you know, get it out of Luffy, but whatever, he just let it. It's not like, I don't think it was that important to him. And if it were, why was it just sitting in some random chest in the bar? It's, to me, it seems like something he just found and just was showing off, because whatever. Um, personally. But, you know, from there, Luffy's, like, stretches, and then he's, like, freaks out because he can't swim. And I like that part. But then you get the whole bandits come in, and they insult Shanks. And Shanks allows it. Spills alcohol on him or whatever, and he doesn't care. Bandits leave, and then they just, you know, they just find it funny. They, they all burst out laughing or whatever. And it, it was a very interesting way this is set up, because then Luffy's like, oh, why don't you take him on like a man? Stuff. Like, there's Luffy's mentality. And Shanks just says, it's not very serious. You just spilled some alcohol on me, whatever. Doesn't matter. And it's very interesting. And this is very interesting. You know, Luffy kind of has that macho impression out of it. Uh, but Shanks, very laid back. Very, la very laid back. And Shanks is that kind of character. I'll stop reviewing that for a second and just talk about that kind of character development there. Because I said this backstory affects Luffy's character when One Piece begins. And it does, and that's interesting, because I, I remember especially when Luffy gets so mad about Buggy slashing up the Straw Hat, Nami makes a comment like, normally nothing phases him. I can't believe he's so mad. Like, she says something like that. And that's kind of the interesting thing about it, because Luffy's laxness is seems to be something he learned from Shanks. And you even get that one scene with Usopp where he approaches Usopp and he mimics like the exact same thing Shanks said to that bandit. And Usopp is like freaked out by it. Uh, the bandit, I don't believe, was. But it's that kind of interesting thing where you see what Luffy learned from Shanks. At the same time, when Luffy is angry, it feels like that kind of natural beast in him being let out. That he as a kid seemed to be promoting. Um, which there's many things to be said on that. Uh, but Luffy kind of has that mix between those two qualities of aloofness and this kind of like dead seriousness slash really angry. You know what I mean? Like Luffy has that kind of. And that gives this kind of interesting. I don't want to say depth, but this interesting aspect to his character. Um, which is seeing him serious compared to seeing him lax. Because when he's serious, it feels like the moment counts a lot more because he isn't very serious normally, if you know what I mean. Him being serious make, helps heighten the situation more than it would if he were kind of just a normal character with a normal attitude, if you know what I mean. From my perspective, anyway. Um, you know? And Oda does a great job at that. Not only in kind of like drawing the characters, because he, he does this thing with the eyes where you can tell when a character is serious. Um, but he has a good job making this bifurcation between serious tone and lax tone. And it makes One Piece able to have a good, comfortable, consistent tone where you can have good humor. And you can have good seriousness, even for things that conceptually might be a little bit goofy, right? It can't be serious. Like Gear Fourth, for example, is a very ridiculous-looking ability. Like honestly, think of it out of context and just look at Gear Fourth. It looks pretty crazy, pretty insane, pretty goofy. But we take it seriously because of the context of the story there, right? We take Gear Fourth seriously, and that's a very unique thing Oda has. As he's, he's able to make those kind of goofy things serious. And maybe it's something along the lines more similar to kind of how Kira Toriyama does it. Although, I don't think Kira Toriyama mixes, like, goofy concepts and makes it funny. I think Akira Toriyama had, you know, funny concepts, curious concepts. Oda kind of has a mesh between that in terms of One Piece. And that's interesting. And it's another interesting aspect of the One Piece world. This is that visual design of it. 
how unique it looks, how what unique things are in it. Um, that was, you know, I digress. That was quite the rant off from this whole Shanks backstory. So to go back to it, Luffy challenges the bandits and then he's like captured basically and then Shanks helps him. And a lot of people will say this is the first time anyone dies in One Piece is when Lucky Roo shoots the dude from behind the head. Very epic scene. And I love this scene because it, is, it establishes Shanks as serious. And again, Shanks says here, like he, he gives this speech and he's like, you can pour alcohol on me, uh, you can insult me, whatever. But if you attack my friends, you know, I will never forgive you or, you know, it's like a pretty basic line. I just like it because of how it characterizes Luffy, because that's exactly how Luffy is later. And Luffy even gives kind of a similar speech where he says, I can't cook, I can't use a sword, I can't even lie. But one thing I can do, to quote, is I can kick your ass. And that's what he says. And that's similar to what Shanks says. It's not the same thing, though. And that's fine. It's not the same thing. Um... It shows that Luffy learned his, like, pirate attitude from Shanks. And he's inspired by Shanks. And that's a great, it's a great aspect about it. Um, because what, because it does make Shanks able to have a presence in the story, even though his physical presence in the story is very minimal. Like, we see him a couple times after the arc's end, and then we see him at Marineford, and then, you know, we, <laughs> we see him at Marijua and all that. But physically, even though he's like one of the first characters to ever appear in the story, we know very little about him, and he showed up not that much throughout the entire story. So it's the fact that his kind of, his lessons that he taught to Luffy, you know, apply to Luffy's character, and that his, his mentality throughout the series makes Shanks have more of an impression than he would just looking at his physical appearances in the story. Which is nice, because obviously, everyone is hyped about Shanks. Even back in the day. Even when I was first watching it, I was hyped about Shanks. Granted, I didn't think Shanks was, like, that strong. I didn't think he was, like, OP or anything, like he is now. I just thought he was a cool dude. And I just really liked the idea of seeing Luffy catch up with him and return the Straw Hat to him. To get back to that. Uh, you know, Luffy, like, the bandit takes Luffy away on this boat and then throws him into the water. And then Shanks saves Luffy and sacrifices his arm. And of course, in this scene, everyone says, Shanks is so strong, Shanks is so great, but he couldn't stop a sea king from, you know, eating his arm. This is probably retconned a little bit by Oda, because I don't think Oda originally thought of Shanks being, like, one of the top-tier characters in the series. Granted, he might have, because he has said it was his original idea for the Yonko to be, like, the main villains of One Piece in the beginning. Like, they would get to the Grand Line, and then it would be the Yonko. And he said the reason it's been so extended is because of the Shichibukai, which he added in later. I mean, he said that, so I don't know. And I don't know if Shanks which was originally going to be a Yonko. I don't know. I don't know if Mihawk might have originally been a, been, been a Yonko. I have no clue. But... Whether Oda intended Shanks to be as strong as he is now, you can simply explain this away, and Shanks himself does when he says to Whitebeard, I made a bet on the New Age. Shanks let himself, let the Sea King bite his arm off. The end. I hope you're happy. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Now granted, Oda probably has retcon more than we think. It's just he integrates it so well because, like I said, the continuity is wonderful. Oda is almost better at foreshadowing than anyone I've ever seen, any writer I've ever seen in anything. And back then, even in my first time watching, very impressed. I mean, we'll get to Mihawk sometime. This video is going on for a while. We'll get we'll get to Mihawk sometime, but. That is some of the best foreshadowing I've ever seen in my life. Ugh, so good. But, Shanks sacrifices his arm. 
Luffy is, of course, distraught about that because his weakness is the reason for that. And I'm sure that's how he, he feels about it, right? The fact that he could not fight those bandits is why Shanks lost his arm. And that gives Luffy the motivation to become strong. And that's a great feeling. That's a great feeling. And then Shanks leaves and he gives Luffy that. And that scene is brilliant. And it sets up Luffy's goal. Shanks inspires Luffy to become a pirate. Shanks teaches Luffy what it means to be a pirate, which is very prudent because there are a lot of perceptions of what being a pirate means by pirates themselves and by non-pirates in One Piece. So Luffy has Shanks' idea of what it means to be a pirate, and that is a special aspect about it. So, you know, in the manga, we would cut and see Luffy leaving. Um, what is his village called? I never remember what his village was called. I know Ir Usopp's a Syrup village. Um, I know Nami's is Kokoyashi village. It's like a kingdom or something. I don't know. But L <laughs> Luffy leaves his village. Um, in the manga, and you see Makino and the mayor, and I think that's it, see him leave. And then he punches the Sea King, the same Sea King that ripped off Shanks' arm, wrapping around there, and then it would cut, like Luffy, he, he, he gets sucked into this whirlpool and he's in a barrel. Um, and then the, the barrel ends up on a ship, which eventually is raided by Alvida, and that's how it all links back. Uh, to that so that i mean i i actually wrote down like a definition for each arc in one piece each little scenario um of course there's the east blue arc but the east blue arc is like a collection of mini arcs basically so i consider that a lot of people do they, they call that romance dawn arc right um i mean you have like the buggy kind of thing should i talk about buggy should I keep going? Uh, hmm. No, I don't think I will. I'll, I'll keep. I'll keep this as it is uh, for now. I'll sum that up. We'll talk about Buggy as its own thing, and then we'll talk about uh, you know Usopp and all that. We'll, we'll take it slow. But for this, that'll be the end of this video. Uh, me just covering Romance Dawn in One Piece. That's the first chapter's name, of course, Romance Dawn. It was the original title of the series, the beta title, but yeah. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you're a fan of this content or you know, content talking about other series, feel free to mention that. You know, I have contact information up and I'm putting it up uh, in the description of my videos. Feel free, to, feel free to subscribe, all that. I'm thinking of making a bit shoot account too, so. You can look into that too if you're into this. Thank you. Farewell.